So um, welcome everyone for joining us uh, and welcome to Dan for being with us this evening. Just um, a little overview of Dan's career. I'm sure you all know him well from the BTCC. Um, started off in karting, um, had an amazing performance in 2013 in British Formula Ford, winning all 24 races he entered, then went on to subsequently win back-to-back -back crowns in Porsche Carrera Cup GB in 2015-2016, uh, spent 2017 in Porsche Carrera Cup GB Championship and also in the Pan-European Championship, um, heading out around Europe. Um, and of course, raced all over the world as well in various other championships. Um, and in 2018, stepped up to the British Touring Car Championship to replace Gordon Shedden in the, the Honda Bag to Halford to Arsa Racing. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> Absolutely spot on. Um, last year, of course, heartbreaking finish uh, to the year, um, losing out to Colin Tag in the penultimate lap. But this year, won the first race of the year. You've been on the podium at all but one uh, venues this year. So um, hopefully it's looking up. Um, welcome, Dan Camish. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. So um, to get started, I think we can all agree that 2020 is not the year we thought it would be. Back in January at the Autosport Show, when you were, of course, launching this championship. Um, BGCC is known for the atmosphere at the circuits and its super passionate fans. How has it actually been for you um, as a driver um, in these, these strange times and the strange atmosphere in the paddock? Um, yeah, it's certainly not the same. It's um, There are certain parts of it that actually are, are, not, are not as bad. Um, obviously, we, we are so uh, consumed anyway on a weekend. Uh, the thing with touring cars is it starts on a Saturday morning and doesn't and obviously finishes on the Sunday. But it, once it starts on a Saturday, it is just hectic. Um, we are constantly pulled between either driving the car, debriefing, um, sponsorship uh, talks in hospitality. At some point, you've got to try and eat as well and, and, and do that. Um, it, it feels like a whirlwind, uh, really. So without having to do certain parts of the hospitality not give talks to sponsors etc uh, we actually have a bit more time to ourselves which which in a way is actually quite nice would i swap it on normal terms no of course not because yeah the fans the fans make motorsport and they certainly make btcc so um when we're out on track i don't i wouldn't say we notice too much because you're so focused on the track ahead um on the next move on the car behind you're not you don't have time to look at the grandstands and if you do you're looking in the wrong place um but i have to say like the cool down laps you know if you had have a, had a great result or even if you haven't um you know we always try and take time to wave to the marshals and um and obviously the fans that have made the trip out to see us that that is not the same and certainly part of winning um in touring cars it's such a fantastic achievement and also a great moment to to win a race in british touring cars um that you know that's sort of taken away a little bit mm -hmm. um and certainly the podium cere celebration on top of that um you know usually there'd be lots of people flocking to the podium to uh you know to give you a round of applause and it's just empty it's and Unfortunately, yeah, it's not quite the same, but we are racing and we are live on ITV4. So, um, you know, I'm glad we're back to it and at least hopefully we're bringing some entertainment on a Sunday to the fans. Yeah, and I suppose, yeah, you can still do your cheer for the TV crews and everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> everyone watching at home. So um, we're now almost halfway through the championship, which seems crazy to say. <laughs> 12 rounds down out of, out of 30. Um, how are you feeling going into the rest of the season? Yeah, it's weird that you say that we're almost halfway when you consider we've only done, we've done four out of the last five weekends, which is um, pretty crazy sort of start to any season. We've just, you know, uh, you know, due to the COVID situation, we've had to cram in as much as possible in the shortest possible time. And we're not the only people doing that. You know, there's other championships out there that are obviously going for exactly the same. Um, it's made for quite a different season, though. Um, the teams obviously get much less time to turn around. So, for example, from Alton Park to Knock Hill, a lot of the teams didn't go home. They just went straight up to the track. Um, and that brought its own challenges because touring cars, even though they're not the fastest car around the circuit, um, when you consider maybe the Porsche Championship, is actually considerably faster when it comes to lap time. The touring cars are really, uh, they're all bespoke and they are quite um, highly strung. They take quite a lot of preparation. Um, 
for example, between rate or between any uh, event, our engines will be taken from the cars, all the subframes are removed, um, brakes, dampers, everything is rebuilt. So you're talking about a, 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 a team like myself in, in Dynamics will basically take the car back to almost its bare shell and start again each week. Um, and obviously, we just haven't really had time to, to do that to the same level. Um, and then having to go to Knock Hill um, straight away from the track meant when you're packed on a hill, so it's like this, <laughs> um, the guys had to do some really late nights. They actually stayed at Alton Park on the evening of Sunday, took the engines out, um, did the clutch work that we have to do because the, sh the, the clutches get shimmed to make sure that we always start at the same point, um, put them back in and then back into the truck and then up to Knock Hill. So um, turnaround times has obviously changed a lot. Uh, that means preparation is is more key than ever because uh, I think you will see as the season goes on more and more problems with reliability. We've already seen quite a few issues with reliability. Um, mm. Certainly at Brands Hatch, that was abnormally hot. It was 35 yeah. degrees, I think, on the Sunday. Um, and I think you will see some more issues with reliability as the season goes on just because the teams will be so stretched and the time frame is so short. So that'll be interesting to watch for. Um and, and yeah, you know, so far so good for us. We've had a sensible start to the season. I wouldn't say it's been, I'd say it's been solid, if not spectacular. Um, I hope we've got more to come. Um, we'll have to see. I mean, at this point last year, I was a similar sort of distance behind Colin. He does mm. have a habit of getting off to a great start. Um, but also looking at his results, he does have a bit of a habit of, of dropping the ball a little bit towards the end. Um, and I don't know if that's because it's it, maybe that's the pressure. Maybe that's just the way the, the, the circuits work for him. Um, but we, we, we caught up a massive amount in the second half of last season. So um, I'm fingers crossed that we can do the same again. <laughs> Leading on from that quite nicely. Um, Rob Squire. Hello, Rob has sent a question in um, saying, Dan, do you still think you're in with a chance to win the championship this year? My heart is still broken for you after your accident at Brands last year. You deserve to be champion. <laughs> yeah, last year, what a shame that was. Um, to, have, to have come as far as we did, like I say, we were, we were a similar sort of distance away at this point last year. Um, and then I went on such a, a sort of hot streak in the middle of the season. I had 14 podiums out of the, uh, you know, in, in the season, which is, essentially won in at 50%, which is quite crazy, really, in touring cars to have that kind of um, podium ratio. Uh, we, we, we took the fight to BMW when no one else could. Um, and ultimately, if, if there was a way to try and win a touring car season, that was it. It was start behind, <laughs> catch up all the way to the end, and then nick it right at the last second. That would be the ideal way to do it, just because then you're not carrying the top weight all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, what a blow to come within sort of a lap and a half. Um, uh, nothing I can do can take that back. And, and I can't tell you how many sleepless nights I've had about it. Um, but unfortunately, it happened. Mechanical failures happen in motorsport all the time. And I'd done 59 races and never had an issue. It just happened to be the one I needed to. Um, and, and, but that also tells a story in the fact that we weren't quite fast enough in 2019. Um, I needed a perfect season to beat the BMW, where BMW didn't need a perfect season to beat me. Um, and truth is, it's, it's impossible for any team or any driver to be perfect all the time. And uh, yeah, heartbreaking circumstances. But if I'd have had a breakdown four races earlier, I wouldn't have won it either. So it just so happened that it happened just at the wrong moment. Um, moving on from that, Winning the first race of this season was fantastic and, and obviously lifted my spirits quite a lot. I needed that because I'd had a long winter, longer than ever, really, before um, due to COVID, where I'd been dwelling on it. Um, there's a bit of a saying that you're only as good as your last race um, and mine hung over me for a long, long time. So it was nice to sort of get finally get back to racing and then get that win. Um, and, it, and it really sort of spurred me on a little bit. Can we still win? Yeah, of course we can. Um, we just need, we do need some changes. Um, a, we need, we need some luck and we need Colin and, and Ash to have some bad luck and it will come. It definitely will come because there will come a point where Colin and Ash, if you take the weekend, for example, Colin was quite happy to follow Ash round. Didn't really make much of an attempt to overtake him. Didn't, didn't really cause too much of an issue for him. That might not be the same once you get towards the end because those points all make a difference and there will come a point where they can no longer be quite as amicable as they are being. 
Mm. And that's the time where I need to be right there, ready to take advantage of yeah. that. Obviously, I've got a great teammate in Matt who will support me 100%. And, um, you know, Matt's a little bit away behind now in the championship and he will continue to push me forward at every opportunity. That's something that a lot of other guys don't have in their, in their armory. Um, but we do need a little bit of help probably from, from Toka um, because we're just not quick enough. And, and that's, mm. that's not me um, sort of preaching and, and asking for, you know, trying to get help um, in any way. It's just, just look at the, just look at the results. Um, to, to, give, to give you an example, at the weekend, um, the best front wheel drive qualifier was uh, Jake Hill, who qualified second. Um, which is a great result. And I was fourth, also a great result. Um, Ash Sutton on pole, obviously. And then we had uh, Colin was third. So if you take that, you'd say that's quite a good split. You know, two front wheel drives, two rear wheel drives in the top four. Well done. Yeah. Uh, the difference being is that Colin had 60 kilos, six, six zero, uh, and Jake Hill had zero. So that's 60 kilo difference in those two cars. Um, and they qualified at exactly the same speed. So... The truth is, when we are all on zero weight, I don't think there's much in the front to rear wheel drive thing. I think it's about bang on. The problem is, when we put weight in next to us, we slow down in a front wheel drive and they go the same speed. Um, and it just makes it really difficult for us to compete over a season. Um, it's close, but at the moment it's tough. And also the, the, the start line um, thing at the moment is, is starting to get quite tough to swallow as a front wheel drive driver. Um, basically what happens is obviously if you if you've got your car uh, a rear wheel drive as it accelerates would squat and, and get get more grip um obviously we start like this and as we accelerate the front wheels lose grip so phys we can't beat physics um so unfortunately something's happened in this championship over the last few years where the weight is no longer having as much of an effect um and also because we don't have a, an option tire this year due to cost saving measures, we're always all, always racing on the medium. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you're seeing quite a lot often that it's the same people at the front all the time. That sort of, it's not as mixed up as it used to be. And the re and one thing that's becoming quite, ob quite clear is that the starts are, are becoming more and more a factor in, in races and how, and who can win them. Um, so, for example, if I qualify on pole and Colin starts third, I know for a fact I am not getting to the first corner first. Um, and if you're going to somewhere like Alton Park or Knock Hill, um, Brands Hatch Indy, I know that I can't really overtake him back because there's just not an opportunity. Once we're up and running, it's too difficult to overtake around them circuits. The race is pretty much done and dusted off the start line. So that advantage they've got that's just been built is, is starting to have a bigger effect. Now, there are places we go where it definitely swings back. Um, and I think the next race for us will be hugely important because we go to Fruxton, which is kind of a Honda stomping ground. Uh, it should suit us down to the ground. Um, if we don't go there and, and really start to claw back some of this, I think we might be in trouble. But ultimately, um, I'm aiming for a podium again. You know, I think I was... Third last year, I was the top guy in a front wheel drive. If I can be that again uh, this season, I'll consider that a, a fantastic achievement. Um, you know, it's, it's such a different philosophy, the front wheel drive to rear wheel drive thing. And we can go around in circles all night and talk about it. But mm. I only know what I'm driving. I, only, I know what Tom Ingram is driving and uh, Jake Hill and Roy Butcher. I can understand compar and com be comparable. I have no idea what Ash Sutton and, and Colin are driving because I've never driven it. Um, could be completely different to, to, to what, I'm, what I'm in. So uh, there's no point having sleepless nights. And, and believe me, I'd have a few um, trying to beat these guys when truth be told, I have no idea what it could be like, to be honest. Um, so my focus now is purely to be, to be the best of, of, of the front wheel drives and, and also to, uh, to do everything I can to try and, and catch up if possible. Yeah, <laughs> you've definitely uh, got a fight on your hands there for us. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting season yeah. to, see, to see how this uh, pans out. Um, we've got lots of questions coming in. Thank you guys for putting them in. Um, we've got a question here from Sophie Gill, who says, "I'm a young Carter. What are your career tips to progress and move up the career ladder?" Um, career tips is. 
the big one for me is always give your best. Um, and I know that sounds silly, but you never know who's watching. I, um, the, main re- the main reason my career took a turn and, and became in a way what it is now and, and actually um, became successful um, is because I was, I was very close to giving up at one point on, on motorsport and certainly as a driving career because I, I, was, I couldn't really find the budget to compete. Um, I, I, it's, there's a lot of tough days in motorsport. There's, the highs are high, but the lows, there's a lot more lows, unfortunately, but the highs do make up for it. So you just got to stick in there. But I was, uh, I was doing a one-off race in Porsches when I got picked up by, by Tim Harvey and my, my sponsor Nationwide, um, who changed my whole career path. Uh, I could have quite easily been retired, but I had that one day where I showed what I could do and what I was capable of, and the right person happened to be watching, uh, and it changed my whole career. So that would be one bit of advice. I would always give you best, because you just never know, even when it's all, you know, you think it's the you know, the dark days and you think there's, there's no way I can keep going forward or you're having doubts about what you can and can't do. Um, always give your best because you just never know when your opportunity is going to come. Um, and also it's important to, to, to punch above a little bit as well. I mean, that's one thing I always did is no matter where I was racing, uh, I always give my best. And even if I wasn't always in the best teams or I wasn't, um, even if I couldn't win, let's say, I, I would still bring the car home in a, in a position maybe slightly more forward than what it maybe it, it would have done if someone else was in it. And, and that doesn't go unnoticed. Um, maybe the fans don't always realise what you have not haven't got, but believe me, the team managers know exactly what you, what you have and haven't got. And um, they, will, they will be watching. So even if you might not have the best engine in go-karting or the best team, the best chassis. And believe me, I know how important it is to have those things, especially in go-karting when the, the, the laps are short, the, um, the differences in, in time is, is so marginal. Um, but if you're getting the very best out of what you've got, people will, people will take, pay attention and, and take note. Um, and you just got to keep going. God, I can't tell you the amount of times I've sat with my dad and, and thought, God, I'm, I'm not sure I could have, I'm cut out for this. I'm not sure I've got a career ahead of me. Um, but if you believe in yourself, you've got to keep going because one day that door will open and you've got to walk through it. Keep, keeping on the casting theme, we actually had um, a question in an advance uh, saying, has any race win ever been better than your Super 100 national at Cave Pigeon in 2006? <laughs> Who sent that in? Was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Uh, that that win was that win was really good actually. I was racing a guy called uh, Justin Edgar. Now the Edgar family in karting is a bit of a dynasty. You say is that related to Jessica Edgar, who's now doing karting? Right. Yeah, I think Jessica Edgar is the son of uh, the daughter, sorry, of Jason. Uh, yes. Jason Edgar. Uh, Justin Edgar is Jason's brother, and then their father was a a karter in the in, in back in the day of the uh, the British kart team back in the day when it was it was sort of huge and. Yeah, they're a bit of a karting dynasty, really, in, in the UK, based out of Rowra. Uh, Johnny Edgar is, is, was, was a great karter and now he's in Formula 4, I believe, part of the Red Bull programme. So he's one to really watch, to, to, you know, as a sort of future uh, British Formula 1 star. But, um, but yeah, I was racing Justin. He was with numerous British karting titles. Um, he was the man to beat in, in my class. And, uh, yeah, I went to Clay Pigeon and, and, and managed to beat him, actually, in a fair fight. He, he chased me for, like, 20 odd laps and uh, didn't make a mistake and, and actually beat him. And I'm, I think my dad still thinks that's probably the best ever win I had, just because I was 17. I was quite new to that level of, of racing, and, and we did it, really. And that was uh, – I don't think he ever saw that coming, certainly that early on. But, but it's things like that, that that kind of kept me going as well. Um, and certainly from my dad's point of view, because without the help of him and, and, and the support I got from him and my family, I would never have, have got where I am, just like a lot of other drivers out there. But he he believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. And um, obviously that led to where we are. So, yeah, that was a good that was a good win. Although I'd say there's there's been some other really good ones since. <laughs> Um, Louis has written in and said, do you miss Andrew Jordan? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I do. He's, uh, Andrew's a really good guy and, and we get on very well, actually. Uh, obviously, we had a bit of a coming together last year. 
uh, which was a bit bizarre and silly thing to do really under a safety car. I don't think either has ever meant for that to happen, but I can't tell you how, um, obviously tensions run high, you're strapped into a racing car, it's it's loud, It's it's your adrenaline is, is pumping massively, um, you're in a dogfight to, to try and win the British Touring Car Championship under massive amounts of pressure. Um, and all you know about the situation is that, that you've got somebody in your ear telling you what, what you think is right or wrong. So I asked, I asked my people what, what um, anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, me and Andy sort of crashed under the safety car last year at one point. Um, I asked my team what was right and they told me and I'm sure Andrew asked his and they told him and we couldn't agree. So we just squabbled about it for about four laps. Um, yeah, and we had a bit of a war of words, but it soon, it, I can't tell you how quickly it went away. Probably the next time I saw him, we joked about it and um, and we get on actually very well. I, he's one of the guys that, uh, guys on the track that you trust when you're racing, you know, you know his ability, he knows yours. Uh, there's a level of respect there. He's very, very fast. Um, and ultimately, I want him on the track so I can beat him because that's that's what I want to do as a racing driver. To, to be the best, you've got to beat the best. So um, obviously last year, uh, I was uh, joint second with him. Um, and and that, that, that was quite annoying, actually, because it actually bumped me to third because he had more wins than me, which I thought was a shame, really, because... Um, it would, have been, it would have been nice to split the BMWs up. <laughs> but um, but no, he, he, he's a good guy. And we, I, st I still see him and, and, and sort of comment on his Instagram stuff quite regularly. So, And it won't be the last time we see him in British Touring Cars. He'll be back. Um, and I'll have to, I'm sure we'll do it all again. <laughs> uh, Andy has asked, what is your favourite track and why? And have you been using a home simulator during lockdown? Uh, my favourite track... Probably, you know what, Knock Hill is, is one of my favourites. Certainly to drive. Uh, to drive a lap of Knock Hill is great fun. It's, uh, it's so undulating. You've got to hit the kerbs just in the right way. Um, it's a brilliant track to drive. Brands Hatch GP, same thing. I think a lot of drivers will say that is one of their favourites. Um, mainly because of the character of it. It's just got so much character. Uh, and it's a real driver's track as well. If you're committed and you can... You've got some bravery about you. You've got a good car under you. You can really make a difference around somewhere like Brands GP. So, that, yeah, those two probably of the British circuits, I would say, are my favourite. Donington's quite good as well, um, but probably doesn't quite make it into my into my top list. Um, I've actually driven some amazing, some, some great circuits. I've been to Le Mans. That is a truly brilliant place to race, um, not just because of its not just because of the circuit. Um, obviously, the, the whole weekend when you race at Le Mans is fantastic. Um, so you've got to take that in. I, I, I raced at Monaco. Um, another one, but the, the venue is incredible. And you, you never you dev, never don't know you're racing in Monaco. You know, it's um, you're constantly in awe of the place when you're there. But one thing I didn't know about Monaco is just how fun the track is to drive as well. You'd think it'd be a bit Mickey Mouse, really. But actually, it's... When you do a good lap and, and you're on a lap, it's actually really enjoyable. It flows much better than you think. And it doesn't bite you either quite as hard as you think it will. Um, when I first went out the pit lane, I was so conscious that any mistake, it will it will have me in the wall. Uh, and, it, and not long after that, I realized that that's not quite true. I mean, we go to a normal racetrack and it doesn't mean you're in the grass every five seconds, does it? You know, so... Once I started to approach it like that, um, the speed went up. And once your speed goes up, your confidence goes up. And yeah, it can bite you. And when it bites, it's going to bite hard. But um, that's the thrill, isn't it? Just staying just below the, uh, just below that point. And um, yeah, I had a great weekend there. I was, on, I was second in the end, which was uh, an amazing result. So yeah, I'm lucky that I've driven some great circuits um, all over the world, actually. I've been to Dubai. That, there's a good circuit in Dubai. Um, I've done uh, Sepang as well in Malaysia bizarre sort of journey that one uh great circuit always rains at bang on four o'clock in the afternoon as well like <laughs> clockwork you could literally watch your clock and it was um but very cool to, to to do it and yeah it's nice to have a few stories right um caroline phipps has had her hand up so hopefully i can allow you to talk caroline and you can ask a question hello caroline is that what oh I need to unmute. She's on mute. All right. Oh. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Hi, yeah, all right. <laughs> How are you doing? 
Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. What What are you doing to uh, keep your fitness up during this break before you go to Swatson? Um, to be honest, right now, I mean, we've the thing is we've come off so many races back to back. So pre-season, um, obviously we had. Um, it's important to have quite a, a good level of fitness, but you don't have to be a. Um, it's not F1 levels of fitness. Um, obviously, the races are quite short. They're only sort of 25 minutes to half an hour. Um, we have power steering. The, 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 the G-forces are not as high as what you'd experience, say, in a single-seater. So, yeah, it's good to have a good level of fitness, but you don't have to be um, sort of a triathlete or, or, or you know, long-distance runner. Um, but I, I, like to, I like to run quite often. Cycling is, is quite good as well. I do quite a lot of that. Um, but there's, there, is a, there is such thing as being race fit. So you could train and you can go to the gym, but when you drive the car for the first time, after a few months off, you will feel it in places you just didn't know you could, <laughs> um, no matter how you've trained. Um, but because we've done back-to-back -back races now, um, I'm as fit as I, I'm race fit in a, in a way I wouldn't be if I hadn't done that. So um, my plan now will be probably to do a bit, yeah, a bit more cycling, a bit more running. Important to try and keep on top of my, of, of my weight a little bit. It's uh, I'm quite tall. I'm six foot two. So if I let myself, and also, I'm also getting older. <laughs> uh, it didn't used to be quite so this difficult, but nowadays I, I do try and watch what I eat a little bit just because if I can stay at a good fighting weight, I know that's half the battle. Um, but yeah, mainly at the moment it'll be sort of aerobic stuff, running, cycling. I'm staying away from the gym uh, at the moment just purely because I don't want to risk any any sort of unnecessary trips to, to somewhere maybe that I could pick up the, the, the COVID because obviously that would be my season um, ruined, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, thank you, Caroline. Um, Richard Lomax has asked, what's your view on the BTCC band move to hybrid engines? Time to embrace new technology or is it going to spoil the good old fashioned racecraft? And uh, no, I think you've got to embrace it, really. I think it's, it's that's the way the world's going. You know, we can't we can't sit by and watch everyone else do it. I think they said, actually, if we don't do it that year, we would be the last purely uh, petrol formula basically going, um, which obviously just wouldn't look, would, wouldn't look right. Um, the, the world's changed. Um, and I'm glad it's hybrid as well. It's not, it's not all electric. Um, I do... Uh, my girlfriend works in Formula E, so I do know a little bit about the all-electric racing. And as great as it is, there is that little bit of a lack of, of, of the noise. Um, certainly for myself, who's grown up with, with noisy engines, um, I think if you're quite new to racing, maybe, or maybe you're a younger generation, maybe that's not going to be as such an issue to you. Uh, but for me, I'm still a little bit, I don't want to say old school because I'm not old, but I, I love engines and I want to hear the engine. So I'm glad it's a hybrid, but it will bring, it's going to bring a whole, a whole new sort of ball game really. Cause we've got, um, I'm not sure exactly how it will be incorporated at the moment. I've seen plans of it. Um, and I have an idea of how it's going to work. I believe it's a, essentially a kind of a push to pass sort of system. So, so what they're going to do is instead of, instead of using the ballast, they will just use the uh, electrical assistance to basically they'll take the ballast out will all be the same weight but then they'll give you varying degrees of electric to make up for it so if you if you win the race they will give you less than somebody who's finished 10th and hopefully they'll have more than you and then you know they'll come to the front and that's how they'll they'll spice it up a little bit obviously there should be much more overtaking even more than there is now um there's gonna be quite a lot of strategy as well because he but he's he's off track stuff that he does nowadays as well he's like He's setting the example for all of us, really, when it comes to um, uh, not just his approach on track, but his approach off track. So he's one he's one really to look at. But you know, Tom Ingram, great driver. Uh, Rory Butcher, he's, he's, he's obviously showing how his ability at the moment. The list goes on, and that's the thing with touring cars. It's not unlike F1, um, where you can sort of count in quite quickly the, the main guys or who's got a chance of winning. I can count to about 15 and they'll, they'll, they'll have a chance of winning. So, and that's what the fans love. And that, that's why touring car is so popular because it is so, uh, it's so close. All the, all the teams are very similar. All the cars are very similar. The drivers are similar. Um, and you just get this real mix up, you know, I can win a race and I have done, I, I've won races where 
you know, you think, right, I've won race two and that's been a great race. Suddenly you're in race three, you're back in the pack, you're starting 12th and you're squabbling over that 15th place and struggling to, to, to stay 15th. And um, you're thinking, hang on a minute, I won the last one. How have I ended up back here? But that is, it's so close out there that quite easily you can find yourself in that kind of situation and people do week in, week out. I mean, the weekend, um, Colin and Ash were in a league of their own, really, in the, in the first two races. Uh, race three, I think they finished about ninth and tenth or something. So yeah. that just that just that just shows. Um, going going on for the weekend, um, Richard had said, "Dad, if you could sum up Knock Hill in three words, what would those three words be?" Um, and I'd just go for solid, not spectacular, which I think I said when I started. If that's our season in general. Um, to have to have the um, the results we did six six fourth and six. Um, if you ask me what 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 should I have achieved, I would have said four four six. Um, I made a not a mistake. I I, I tried to pass uh, Jake Hill in the first race and end up on the outside of Colin, uh, who was quite quick to put me in the gravel. And I don't blame him because uh, um, I'd done the same to him. And, and 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 I'm looking forward to doing the same to him next time I get a chance. But it's if you have an average of fifth, which is what, I, what I've had, that's a pretty good result in touring car racing. So average fifth position, that's good, very good points. Uh, it's very hard to have a consistent day in touring cars. I mean, I spent 2018 and yeah, maybe 19 was better, but 18, I could have one good race. I could have two. I never had three. It was so hard to have three consistent races just because it is so tough. Um, there's lots of lots of little bumping and, and, and nudging um, and race free. There's a bit of a mentality. I don't know if it comes across on TV, but I know when we're out there, it's weird because the, the level of um, the adrenaline rises in race free. It's, it's like this mentality of it's going in the truck. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> and it's bizarre because there's the same amount of points in race three as there is for race one and two. Yeah. You can really tell when you're out there that it's not the same race. And I don't know why that is. And um, everyone just goes a bit mad. Just surviving a race three is, is tough in itself. So, mm. um, so no, it was, it was a solid weekend. Really good points. Uh, I would have loved a podium because I've had a podium in the other, in the other few I've done. Mm -hmm. Um, but we were close. We, we were right there uh, at the end of the day. And um, as I say, the rear wheel drives just had a bit too much of an advantage in, in Scotland for, for the rest of us. But that doesn't mean to say they're going to have an advantage come Fruxton. So I'd like to think that we've got a very good chance of, uh, of a race winning Fruxton. Someone actually sent a question in related to that topic saying, you know, we all know the term. If you're not rubbing, you're not racing. Classic kind of BTCC vibe. Yeah. So, do you feel it's being taken a little bit too far at the moment or is that just racing? Tough one, that. I mean, it's not. It's not really the world I came from. I. I was. Um, you know, the Porsche stuff I did was was basically teaching me to be a GT driver. My my, yeah. my sort of goal was to end up at Le Mans for a factory team, and 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 the whole idea in that sort of racing is you don't hit the other guy. <laughs> the cars. The cars are just not built for contact. Um, the thing about touring cars is they can actually take a little bit more abuse. Um, mm -hmm. And ultimately, we're not bad drivers by any stretch, but the rules that we race to, and I don't mean the rules as in what's right and wrong. I'm talking about the, the, the team, the cars are so close and the drivers are so close. We all want the same bit of track all the time. And you can't get away from people. So even if you're slightly quicker, um, how the rules work basically mean that by the time you've put a bit of weight in it or whatever else, you're going around the same speed as everybody else. And all... Unfortunately, there comes times where you just you can't help but crash, um, whether that's in a small way, a big way. And that's it's kept like that for a reason because it's exciting. That's what the fans yeah. want to see. They want to see close racing. Um, it's not always what the drivers want because at the end of the day, we're racing drivers. We don't want to be bumping into each other. It, my idea of a good day is just win off the front and never see anyone else. <laughs> That's my, idea. That's my idea of a nice day out. Unfortunately, I don't get it. In, no one gets it in touring car racing. Um, yeah, there are times where it goes a bit too far, but ultimately, the, also the, you know, the stewards are there to come down on top of us whenever we, we do take it a bit too far. Um, and it will hot up throughout the season. At the moment, I don't think anyone's really... 
I haven't seen too much to say that anyone's got too much. There's not many grudges out there yet, but they will come. That They always do because there's a lot at stake, uh, certainly if you're going for the championship. Um, and at some point, you're going to have to get your point across. Um, <laughs> and that's just the way it is. So, yeah, it, it, it can be quite brutal at times, but also um, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, and, if, and if it became a procession like Formula One, you won't be watching, so... <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> um, I think we touched on it briefly earlier, but Thomas has said with the limited time, you know, everyone is having between weekends to work on the cars. Are you surprised how reliable they are staying with the number of back-to-back -back races? Um, yeah, I expect them. We, we've had a, we've had a few little reliability issues. To be honest, the, the main ones we've seen so far were, were for, from the heat at, at, at Brands Hatch. They were, it was such a hot weekend. It was sort of 34, 35 degrees and and quite a few cars, especially the Hondas, bizarrely. Uh, Honda's known for its <laughs> build quality. Uh, the Hondas suffered worse than, than, than some, which was a shame. Um, we've had such amazing reliability these last few years, but, th but that race, we had, we had a few issues. Um, now, I know that in, in the team I'm in, Dynamics, that the cars are prepared to such a fantastic level. And, and I know that level will not change um, throughout the season. Um, the guys will always put the car down to the best of their ability. Um, and I'm very thankful that I'm in a very lucky position to be part of this team. Uh, can everyone do that? Let's wait. We'll have to wait and see. Um, because there's, yes, we've got a couple of weeks off now, but then we go again and we do exactly the same again. The races come thick and fast and we've got more back-to-backs to come. Um, and I think you will see, I think you will see some, some failures. Um, but ultimately it's testament to, to, to the teams and the guys that they're, you know, they're on top of it. Obviously the plan for it, um, and they're doing everything they, everything they can to make sure that the, the cars are as good as they can be because points are very hard to come by in this championship, um, and it's, but it's very easy to lose them. So, um, you know, every point counts. I know more than most. I lost by two last year. So, um, you know, every little point, every position, uh, it all adds up at the end of the day. So, um, so no, we'll have to see. I, I'm, I'm really glad that my guys are on top of it. You know, I keep in touch with them quite often. Um I'll probably go in actually tomorrow and see them and um, make a few cups of tea and bring some donuts and keep morale high. So, um, you know, because they, they've come off a really busy couple of weeks, you know, to go from to go from Alton Park, which you've been at since Wednesday night, Thursday morning, to go up to Knock Hill and then get home on the Monday. You know, you almost two weeks away for those guys, away from the families and um, the long days, uh, early early mornings. So, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll need some love, bless them. So I'll probably go up and see them for a bit. Um, question here. Um, obviously, you know, when you're doing the races yourself, you're so focused on what's going on with you um, and, the, you know, your immediate surroundings. Um, do you then go and watch the TV footage back to kind of get an overview of the whole race and see what's going on with everyone else? Uh, sometimes it sort of varies. Um, I, I, I do watch... I do watch um, certain ones and I don't watch others. I can't tell you exactly why that is. Uh, if I win, I tend to watch. <laughs> Funny that. Um, I actually watched Knock Hill back just, just out of interest. Uh, Knock Hill's a great one to, to for, 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 for film anyway, just because the, the way the cars are tapped for the chicane and the, 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 the cinematography you get at Knock Hill is really quite cool. Um, so that's, that is a good one to watch in general. Um, but I do, yeah, I, I do watch some and I don't watch others. I wouldn't say I'm there's not much you can learn from the TV as such, really, because it's such a different perspective when you're sat in it, uh, what you see and what you don't see. Um, and also, I've done so much of it now. I mean, I've been driving around the same circuit since 2009. So 11 years. Um, I actually did. <laughs> there's this there's a thing where the, a lot of the drivers do track walks. Um and I did one at Donington on my Instagram and I took a few people around and uh, it's quite funny because we walk around acting like something might change and it's exactly the same. It looks exactly the same every year. So um, we look at the same bit of track we looked at last time we were there, um, which is always good fun. Um, but it's just that thing that drivers do and I think you feel better when you've done it. So you walk around with a notepad and I just write, looks the same. <laughs> and then we move on. But it's... Um, 
but yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, someone has asked, would you be interested in a season in a rear wheel drive car to try your chances? Ooh, now, <laughs> now we're talking. Um, yeah, um, yes and no. I mean, I've got what I've got right now. I've got a front wheel drive Honda Civic um, and the, the top two in the championship right now are in a, in rear wheel drive cars. That doesn't mean to say that when I get there, if, if I was given the opportunity to drive one, you have no idea what's around the corner. What you don't want to be is the guy that gets a rear wheel drive car just as the rules change <laughs> and you wish you were in a front wheel drive car. So right now I would, you know, if someone said, look, you can drive a rear wheel drive Honda Civic, I'd say, great, bring it on. Because I think the rules right now just ever so slightly suit them. Um, and I'd much rather start there, you know, have some of their advantages than some of our advantages. And we do have some, don't get me wrong. We are definitely better when it comes to hitting curbs. I mean, people might have seen from Knock Hill, for example, um, the middle sector where we fly over the chicane, much rather be in my car than a BMW, just because it, it works better. That is designed to work better, has to work better. Um, then you get to the last corner and you wish you had a BMW because it has rear wheel drive traction and it fires off and, and it disappears. So the strengths and weaknesses in each package, um, at the moment, it just looks like when you add all theirs up and you add all ours up, theirs might come to six or seven and ours come to four or five. And that's just the way it is right now. Um, but don't mean to say it's always going to be like that. It really doesn't. Um, and I'm very thankful to, to have a great team around me. I'm very, very thankful to, to be in British touring cars. So, no, right now, um, Honda, like, you know, for life. And, um, you know, we've got to push on with what we've got. And we've got, to make, we've got to try and make a difference. We've got what we've got. We've got to keep perfecting it and pushing the boundaries of what we've got. Um, and hopefully we can just about get on top of them. I mean, we almost did it last year. There's no reason at all we can't do it again. Um, let's just see what comes. Speaking of Honda, we did have a question sent in in advance. Um, what is your favourite Honda road car at the moment? Uh, tough one. I've actually got the uh, the Honda NSX at the moment. Uh, Honda was very kind enough to, to lend me it for a week. So it's, um, I actually took it up to Scotland and uh, had had some a few good drives in that. Um, the NSX is, is a truly stunning supercar. Um, it's bright orange is the one I've got. It, it looks every bit of the supercar. It's truly stunning. Um, probably the most fun thing about actually having that car is, is seeing people's reactions when they realize it's a Honda because they just don't know it, it exists, I don't think. I don't think they've ever seen one. I certainly have never seen a, a Honda NSX uh, of the new type on the road. Uh, mm. There's so, so few out there. Um, it's quick in, in a way that few other cars are. I mean, it's, it's nearly 600 horsepower, but it's, it's the hybrid system that really sets it apart. Um, I, actually tried the, I actually tried the launch control out of the, um, on, the slip, on, the slip, on the slip road out of the services on the, uh, on the motorway the other day on the way to Knock Hill. And uh, it, actually com it actually comes up with a rocket ship on the dashboard when you put it into launch. Um, and I had a cup of tea between my legs. I probably should have taken that rocket ship more literally because as it set off, the, the, the tea that was in the cup, um, and I, I had a lid on it, but, it, but the inertia pus pushed it out of the lid and like, like a water fountain. So I'm like, I'm now going up the slip road, at, you know, not to 60 or whatever, uh, with like a fountain of, of tea. <laughs> Um, yeah, it wasn't sensible. It was silly, really. Uh, and I sort of, I think the jeans I wore all day that day had tea stains on them. And I remember thinking, God, next time it, the rocket ship wasn't, wasn't, uh, it wasn't pretending, put it that way. It's so fast and it, it, it's so fast and not to 60. I think it's one of the fastest accelerating cars you can buy, actually. Um, I think it's about 2.8 seconds or something silly. Um, and the main reason for that is you had the electrical uh, assistance that it gives you. Um, it's effectively four wheel drive and, and yeah, it's an amazing car, truly amazing. And you just don't see many. So that as, as a feat of engineering, that, that is, that is incredible. Uh, I was lucky enough to actually have the Honda E as well. Uh, recently Honda, Honda let me have a little go in that. I did a bit of a, a short film with them. Um, and that, that, that's actually one of the really, the, the, the things I enjoy about touring cars that I enjoy about being part of the Honda brand is that I get to do some of this cool stuff um, that others maybe don't get to do. So um, they give me the Honda E for a few days and that, that was the same. Um, 
people would actually come up to you and want to talk to you about it. One guy actually pulled up next to me, um, pulled up, uh, got out of his car, walked back to have a conversation about it because he'd never seen one and wanted to know more about it. Uh, it's stuff like that that I really enjoy being involved in. But, but the Honda E is super cool as well. Uh, loads of tech. Um, all electric, which is new to me. I've never, I've never had, had been an all electric car before, but it was super, super cool. So uh, it, between them two, actually, I think. The, the Civic Type R is, is mega. I, I've had one on the road for quite a while. That is the best hot hatch you can buy, period. Um, it is just such a stunning car. Um, great road car and will go on a track faster than most things, um, which is super impressive. Um, but yeah, if you if I was to, if I was to have a two car garage right now, I'd have a Honda E and a Honda NSX. <laughs> uh, we had a question sent in beforehand saying if you could drive any BTCC car from the past or present, what would it be and why? Oh, that's quite a tough one, actually. Um, I actually don't know. I mean, I'd have to try and. I'd have to have a go in a super touring, a super tour, I imagine, you know, the, the heyday as it was sort of known of, of touring cars back when the rules were much more open, budgets were much, much higher. Um, you know, I've obviously been a teammate to Matt Neal. I get to, and, and, and uh, his engineer, Barry, who was, who was his engineer back in the day. Um, they've got some fantastic stories about, about those days and just how, just how great the cars were. Um, you know, I, I wish I could tell you some of them, but to be honest, Matt, Matt, um, Matt tells them far better than I do. So you'll have to do one of these with Matt. I'm sure he'll fill you in on, on some of the stuff they used to get up to. But to the extent that there were stories where um, uh, one car manufacturer, I can't, I can't remember, that, I won't say exactly who, but they were actually making a different size doors on a different production line to, to fit the shell. Um, and that's just a level of a level that we just don't go to anymore. You know, mm -hmm. that shows you how dedicated they were to creating a, a fast racing car that they were actually making smaller doors <laughs> just so it fit the, um, just so they could sort of get around the rules slightly. Uh, that, that's, that's a hell of an investment. So yeah, I'd have to say a super Tora. I'm not sure exactly which one. Uh, I grew up sort of watching uh, menu and Plato when they were in the, um, in the Williams Renault. And that, that, that toy would be the one as well, just because it was run by Williams and, you know, legendary Frank Williams. And, um, yeah, that, that, that would probably be the one I'd go for. So Rob Squire has been asking, what are your thoughts on the rumours of Gordon Shadden possibly be returning to the touring car paddock? Um, well, I, I know Gordon well, obviously through the team. I, I, I see him often. At Knock Hill, he was, he was with, with us very often. Um, obviously very, very fast and accomplished. Uh, a great friend of Team Dynamics, a great friend of Matt's uh, and the whole team, to be honest. Um, I mean, I tested with him in uh, the start of this season because obviously Matt got quite badly injured. Um, mountain biking, he, he fractured collarbone and, and broke some ribs, punctured the lung. He was really in a bad way, Matt was. And, and truth be told, had, had the season not been delayed, Matt was not making the start of the season. Uh, he tried and, and, and all, our, all the press releases and all the sort of comments were positive. Don't worry, I'll be there. But the truth is he wasn't making it. Um, and, and, and Gordon would have stepped in. There's no doubt about that. Gordon was primed to go in. We'd, we'd done testing at Knock Hill. Uh, and Donington, uh, he'd already tested the car, so he, he was very much going to be in the car. Um, and obviously, then, then then COVID hit, and 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 obviously the time frames got changed, and Matt had longer in recovery, and obviously Matt Matt's back in the car, and that's great. But there's no doubt Colin would be a massive addition to, to British touring cars. Um, I'm sure that he'll be looking to find his way back in. Um, I think. I'm sure he'd love to be to, to be back in dynamics. I mean, I, I know that he looked to get back in quite recently, and obviously, I'm that I'm I'm there at the moment, and, and I'm very happy to be there and, and have a, a nice shiny contract. So um, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure he'll be pushing to get that changed. But you know, there's other teams out there he'll be looking at. Um, you know, but he'll want to go somewhere that's competitive for one. He doesn't want to go somewhere that's not because why does he need that? That you know, he's so accomplished and he's, he's so fast so he needs a, a package that's going to allow him to challenge for the title um and he needs somewhere that commercially makes sense you know there's there's lots of drivers available out there if you can bring 
um, bring some money to them. There's very few out there available if you're not in that position. Um, so I'm sure he's looking at it quite closely, but whether or not it's actually feasible, that's a different thing. You know, I, I do see lots of things from fans saying, you know, let's get Gordon back. And yeah, if only it was that simple. Um, he, he will be, he will be trying. And, and there's people out there that will be trying to help him as well. So um, let's see on that one. 20, uh, let's see what 2021 brings. Definitely. Um, I have to ask this question for Mark as well. He said, as a trainee clerk of the course, should there ever be pineapple on a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't mind it. I, I take I would I take it off weirdly, but I'm, my my eating habits are a bit odd actually because I take it off and then I'd have a piece of it on and be like oh I quite like that, but I still take <laughs> it off and exercise and I don't know why I do that. So I, I could eat quite easily eat a pizza with pineapple on, but I guarantee you I would order it I would take the pineapple off. <laughs> and that's I don't know why I do things like that. So yeah I don't mind pineapple on pizza it kind of works. Yeah, it's right. There's worse things than that. <laughs> you know like people that put like fish on pizzas and stuff like anchovies and stuff oh like no anchovies no one. <laughs> definitely not for me that um thomas has said would you ever have a go at racing uh maybe in some of the historic stuff or the mini miglias against andrew jordan uh yeah i mean it's it's <sighs> historic stuff is, is not something i've ever really been involved in i'm getting closer to it now through through dynamics because matt's done quite a lot of it um dynamics have a, have a business of actually um restoring and, and racing um classic cars you know that's that's what they do so i i do i can get a little bit closer to it and and, and matt actually said the other day do you want me to have a look and, and sort of sound out a few people and see if i can get you in in something for um for sort of the goodwood type stuff and oh, nice. yeah. to be honest I'm not, I'm not sure if it's if it's for me yet um i quite like racing the modern stuff one, it comes with uh, a six-point safety harness, <laughs> which I'm very happy to have. <laughs> and, and two, I'm, you know, I'm still trying to, to, you know, I was a lap and a half from being, being champion this, this last year. Um, and if I had been champion, maybe my outlook had been slightly different. But right now, I still feel I've got to, I've got, I've got to get on top of this championship before I turn my, my attention to anything else. Um, you know, I'm in a very privileged position that I race for a fantastic team. Uh, I'm a professional racing driver and there's very few people out there like that. So for me, I want to be on top of my game and, and I don't want anything to detract from that. You know, I'm, I'm a British touring car driver for, for Honda and, and that's, that's my job and that's what I am. So right now, uh, I'd rather stick to that. There's a lot of time in the future to, to play with uh, historic cars. Um, but I won't get these years back where I'm in a top team fighting for the, for the biggest title in British motorsport. So I've got to take that first. Definitely. Um, we're coming up to our hour now. Um, so we're just going to have a few quick fire questions to round off. Thank you no very problem. much for joining us. Um, so sent in advance, we had a favorite pre-race snack. Uh, banana. Wet or dry race? Dry. Um, Monaco or Le Mans? Le Mans. <laughs> Senna or Prost? Uh, Prost. Uh, front wheel drive or rear wheel drive? Uh, front. Oh, that was, te that was, you're trying <laughs> to catch me out now. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us tonight, Dan. And no problem, my pleasure. For sending your questions in. Um, it's been great to uh, put your questions down this evening. Um, we've got a future Q&A coming up in October with Richard Milliner, who's the M Sport team principal for the World Rally team. M Sport, of course, also linked to, um, to BCC now through the, the hybrid engines. Um, and also they run um, Bentley's GT program for that as well. So that will be coming up soon. Um, look out for that in various Motorsport UK publications. We'd love to have you. And um, thank you for joining this evening. Thanks again, Dan. No problem. Cheers, guys. Yes.